always keep getting me while I'm trying to <laughs> sip on this drink. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to Passive Money, everybody. Uh, today, we're just going to talk about uh, some of the lending processes that we've been through. Uh, I've been through, I mean, closings that we've been through. Let's say it like that. Because, I, you know, I've, I've closed on pro properties the traditional way, you know, going through a mortgage broker, passing out W-2, pay stubs, all that other crap. And I've also just did cash buys. Uh, I've also done commercial. Uh, Alex then went a couple routes that I haven't. So today we're going to talk about, to Alex about just which process was the hardest going through just different types of loans. I mean, I know you've been through the low dot process. I know you've been through the traditional uh, financing. And I know you've been through conventional loan, you know, financing, just going through. And you, you were the cash buyer also on, on another rental property. So just out of the three rental properties that you have, which closing do you think was the easiest? I think to be honest, so oh well, okay, for the easiest cash, good guy, cash is straightforward. But yeah. but for why what happened? No. Oh uh, <laughs> for the easiest cash for sure. But with I will say this, with lending on closing on a property using lending, I don't know commercial. I haven't done commercial yet. But for residential financing and all that, from what I've done, it I would say it's I don't think it's like the process. I think it's who you work with as your lender. I think depending on the lender is going to determine whether it's complicated or not. And so I think the process is pretty much the same. It's just some lenders are more picky than others and some go through the underwriting process longer than others some are some communicate with you more than others so like this duplex i was like left in the dark and like they weren't they were not very communicative until the very end so i had like little to no knowledge on what was really going on i'm just like doing what i need to do you know sending in whatever they request and all that but the lending even though i i guess as you pointed out i've done it i've done it different ways I would say it's the the processes themselves are the same. I think it just depends on what lender you're using. I want to disagree. Uh, the lender the lender does matter. The lender does matter, especially if you're doing the same type. But like when you was doing the when you was doing the no when you was doing the no doc loans or the low doc not no doc low doc loans. That because it was that type of loan, you had less information to provide, less documentation to provide them. So that's how that process got done. Now, I'm not saying that the company that you used the first time was probably the easiest, but if you did that same process with another company, they probably asked for more. Yeah. But it's just different, different strokes for different, different things. Um, like me, mostly I go through traditional. I don't do the I don't do the creative. I mean, I would love to find a creative financing deal. I guess I'm not working hard enough with that or, you know, seller finance or something of that nature. But it's, I believe it's the type type of loans is being done. I mean, I agree with you 100%. Cash is the easiest one. I mean, cash, you go to closing, you sign what, two pieces of paper and then you're out of there. You go, you finance anything, you sign like 30, 40, 50,000 sheets of paper. feel like you can sign your life over. Uh just for a house. Uh, and so, yeah, so no, that's the difference. I never did a low doc, but I figured the information that's provided, and I know lenders that do these type of loans. I just never did them. And for people that's wondering if you're doing a traditional, conventional, uh, especially you would probably get, I mean, if all credit scores are the same, if you're doing one alone for a house that you're going to own or occupy, you're going to get the lowest rates there. Uh, and then conventional, it'll be higher, especially if it's for a rental property. And then the least documentation that you provide, the higher your interest rate is. Same like if you did a DSCR loan, that's no documentation really. It's just the uh, asset is cash flow in itself. The interest rate will be higher. Um, but the traditional and and I've been through the same process you've been through. We're going through, you know, I'm you know getting appraisals, getting inspections, doing all the insurance work. Providing documents, then they come back and ask for 60 more thousand sheets of documents again. And then it feels like that week or two right before closing, everybody just go combo blackout on you. And then you don't know where you stand, but you're just sitting there 
And then next thing you know, you just get an email, you're approved, final approval or whatever, or they give you the uh, the final HUD statement so you know how much money you need to bring the cash to close. And and though and that's that stuff is nerve wracking, especially. But once you've been through it, you know, a couple of times, you're like, oh, okay, we're at this process. But if nobody's calling you saying no, we can't do it, then all is good. Um, I'm a big proponent of always having a backup plan because if somebody pulls your credit, let's say a hard pull for, let's say for a mortgage loan, if you're getting, if you, if you're in that 35, 40 day window of getting that hard pull, I always have a backup plan. So I'll just use two random banks. If I got a loan or something being processed with just, let's say Bank of America, I will always uh, have somebody else because I already got the documentation for Bank of America. If I'm doing the same type of loan, I will go with another uh, and shop around the interest rates and things like that. But I'll always start the process with somebody else just in case that first one fall through. The backup one will always already be ready, prepared to do it. And then I'll give them ample enough time and I'll be transparent with them and let them know what's going on. But I've had I have had times where the primary person I was using fell through like a week or two right before closing. And then the backup person was right there. They already had the documents, uh, documentation, and then they ran with it. So, yeah, I, th I think it's just a it's just a matter of what type of loan it is, because commercial was pretty, pretty straightforward, easy. They just want to make sure the property, the asset itself is uh, can pay for itself. So it's kind of like the DSCR type of model and then want to make sure you know if it's triple net you know uh leases on the property or, or what have you but that's what they want to do they want to make sure it it'll it'll the rent the cash flow from the property will cover you know the debt obligation and things of that nature and so that's the easiest one so my my commercial was something like you're a low doc but it was still a process and commercial was a little bit more stringent on net worth and uh cash cash reserves and things like that and making sure that your your coverage ratio is is the asset is being operated properly if they're going to continue giving you a loan especially and the other caveat to that is there's in commercial you can rarely find 30 year fix it's always a floating rate three five seven ten uh adjustable rate mortgages on there so on the commercial uh, project that I had, I ended up paying it off before the rates readjusted. So that's what I see in it. But what you got? Yeah, I think, I mean, I still think I have a lot more different ways of closing uh, to experience, especially, like you said, seller mm -hmm. financing, creative financing. What I do know or what I have started to learn and notice in closing any deal is you can be creative in the deal in closing and right. a lot of this i've learned from you like especially uh you had walked me through one of like what to say one time where it was like if the property needs rehab and it still works or whatever that you can basically get creative with the seller will he allow you will, will he fix it if he won't will he come down on the price if not you can what was it? I think you had told me that rehab it. And then if you don't end up closing, you could put a lien on that property. And that's, that's a, you know, those are some ways where you can get, just get creative with, you know, how are you going to work the deal, the deal itself? You know, I, I think coming up with the means to actually just get the funds for closing and whatever there's all these different types of forms what i'm really liking is just learning how to work different deals now just learning you know every property is a different step a different procedure different different things i learn and stuff so but i would imagine the commercial space is more more intense though because they they are treating it like an actual business operation like you were saying right. Right. I mean the commercial was it was it was pretty cool to go through I did the commercial uh early on uh and then it, the process was pretty straightforward it wasn't all this wrinkling you know headaches and all that it was everything was you know just 
upload documents. It wasn't sitting in the office and, you know, waiting for people to come. Well, congratulations, you got a loan and all that other crap that they do to make people feel good about signing their life away. <laughs> but all in all, it was good. And like I said, before the rate adjusted, mine was a, I was on a five-year adjustable. Uh, I I paid it off in the four. I paid it off in the four and just said, forget this. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want, and then of course, hindsight's 2020. Then by the time the rate was supposed to adjust, I probably would have been during the COVID area where it had been a lot lower. Uh, so, but my, my rate was like, five percent or something like that so i could have got down about you know three or something but still i just wanted to get it over with i hate having the headache of you know worrying about stuff that i can't control so i you know having a fixed rate and things of that nature you can control what you control or if you paid it off you know you could control what you control as far as um property taxes and insurance i mean really property taxes you you at the mercy of the municipality that you're in but on the insurance, you can always shop rates and things of that nature. So that's that's the things I like. Uh, control what you control so you don't have to deal with the headaches. But 30-year fix, uh, I'm a big proponent of that. Anywhere else, if you're not in a commercial space, don't don't even try to get fancy. I mean, you can do a 30-year fix if it if the cash flow makes sense. But besides that, I'm not I'm not trying to get too fancy with this thing out here. So let me say guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Got any questions or comments let us know down below share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one